Here we've looked, thinking about unemployment, we've looked at people who leave unemployment. But of course, to figure out how the total amount of unemployment varies, we also need to look at people who enter unemployment. Right? We need to know what comes in, what comes out, to know what happens to the total stock of unemployment. And so, um, we can look at that. Um, so this is, the, it's again a monthly rate. But this is a job separation rate. So what we saw earlier was a job finding rate. The rate at which workers are able to move from unemployment to employment. This is a job separation rate. So these are workers who move from employment to unemployment. Okay. Uh, so these are people uh, who either are uh, laid off or people who quit. Okay. Uh, so this is for the US. And these are people who move from employment to unemployment. So what do we see here? Uh, well, the first thing that's very important is that this job separation rate is very far from zero. Okay? Uh, so you can see, if we took an average, you would have something that's just slightly above uh, maybe 3%. Okay? So it means that every month, roughly 3% are uh, 3% of workers are losing their job or are willingly leaving their job. Okay, that's very important to you. It means that this is, uh, this is, well, it means two things. First, it means that it's much less than, uh, much less than zero. Because if your job separation rate was zero, you know, nobody will leave their job. Eventually, everybody will be employed. Right? If you keep your job forever, at some point, as people are always leaving the pool of unemployment, everybody will have a job, you will have no unemployment. So to sustain a pool of unemployment, you need to have constantly people who come in. So here's this job separation rate that we call S. The fact that it's trip is always well positive means that you always have a flow of workers who get into uh, who get into unemployment. That's going to sustain uh, your rate of unemployment. But something that's important is that that job separation rate is not that large. You know, it's a couple of percent, three percent, maybe a little bit more sometimes. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that in fact people are going to keep their job for quite a long time. You know, this if only three percent of people are leave, are leaving their job every month means that 90, 97 percent of employed workers are keeping their job every month. So this is very important. It means that actually here we're dealing about with long term relationship. And in fact, in the U.S., quite interestingly, uh, so the average job duration. If you look at the US, it's about eight years. So it, it is um, very long. So here, you know, once you get a job, you stay in that job for a long time. And in fact, it explains also why possibly it takes time to find a job, is that this relationship lasts so long that you want to make sure that it's the right relationship. Um, so, so that's why workers are careful when they pick a job, and that's why firms are also careful when they pick workers, because this is going to be a long-term relationship. Um, so it's a little bit like a marriage, right? If, you're, you know, if you want to be married for life, you're going to be careful when you pick your spouse. Um, and so this is exactly the same, uh, the same setup. And actually, so average job duration is about eight years in the US, but you have as, uh, about 25% um, of jobs that are actually last more than 20 years in the US. Uh, so it means that 25% of jobs are you know, almost uh, lifelong jobs. Um, so here we're talking about very long, uh, we're talking about very long relationship. And that may seem obvious uh, to you all, but actually it wasn't always like that. And that's, that's a, a fairly modern development. So labor markets before the 20th century uh, and in fact, before World War I, operated completely differently. Uh, before, they were mostly uh, spot markets, meaning that uh, firms, so at the time it was mostly manufacturing firms, but also, say, farms, would just pick their workers for the day. Uh, and workers would just, if you think about factories, workers would just report to the factory in the morning, and they would just pick the workers they needed for that day. And at the end of the day, they would pay them they are day well and they would let them go. So these were just relationships for one day. And every day the same thing would happen. The firm would just pick some new workers that would satisfy the need for the day and let them go at the end of the day. 
And there was a big shift around the time of World War I. Um, there was a big movement actually in the US called the personnel management movement. And um, these people realized that in fact it would probably be better for everybody to have much longer relationship. So for the firm, they thought it would be better because you could train the worker, they could learn about the specifics of the firm. And of course, for the worker, it would be much better because they would have a more stable income, they would have much less uncertainty. And so what they thought is that if workers were under a more stable income, more uncertainty, were able to be trained on the job, they would also be performing better. And so there was a big push uh, that coincided also with, uh, with unionization, but a big push try to make relationship last longer. And as a result of that big push that operated mostly between World War I and World War II, we moved from what was essentially a spot market before World War I on the labor market to uh, a market with very long relationships that operates very differently than say, the stock market we talked about uh, earlier. So this is something that's very important to realize that here we're talking about market with very long lasting relationships. Uh, and when we model the labor market, we're going to use, uh, we're going to use that fact. The last thing that you can see here, uh, compared to the two previous graphs, is that uh, the job separation rate actually is very, fairly stable over time. Uh, you don't see this huge swing that we saw for the job uh, finding rate and the vacancy filling rate. Uh, so you can see you have roughly here uh, what do we have? So we have a period in which the job separation rate was you know, fairly stable on that level, and you have kind of a secular increase in your job uh, finding rate, and then now we've seen a secular decrease in the job uh, separation rate here. But you do not really see this large fluctuation over the business cycle. You can see that your job separation rate is always you know, between 3% uh, and 4% uh, initially, and then it's climbing to maybe 5% and now it's falling. But the changes are, are very tiny over, uh, over the business cycle. So you can see tiny increases uh, in the job separation rate at the onset of recession. So here you can see a little bit, here you can see a little bit, here you can see it as well, here you can see it as well here and here. So you have some small increases at the beginning of recession. So these are basically the waves of layoffs that you see at the onset of recession. But um, these increases are not, uh, are not very large. Uh, here you're talking about maybe an increase of 10% uh, you know, or something like that of the existing job separation rate. That's not very much compared to what we saw earlier where uh, say the vacancy filling rate and the job finding rate would uh, double uh, or be reduced by 50% between recession and, uh, and expansion. Okay, so in fact, when we model the labor market, we are not going to uh, look at fluctuation of the job separation rate. We're going to assume that the job separation rate is um, constant over time. And so we're going to abstract from these little uh, blips here. Uh, that's, you know, to simplify, but it's because these blips do not seem to be uh, do not seem to be very large. So the picture we're going to uh, the picture that we're taking away now is that the pool of unemployed grows in bad times because it's it takes much longer to find a job and not really because you have many more people who come in into an uh, unemployment. The pool of unemployed shrinks a lot in good times because it's much faster to find a job and not really because fewer people uh, lose their job. And that's really the picture that emerges in um, US data.